long, long time ago, uh, version 5 of PD Pro, we had this uh, introduction of a feature that helps the animators. And this, this is what that's uh, going to be about, is to talk a little bit about the traditional animation tools, uh, in particular the light table and some recent enhancements to that in version 9.5. Um, if you remember some of these animations here, when, when you do these kind of animations, it's always good to see, as you're drawing one frame, to see what is the frame that you just drew before, right? To see backwards by one, maybe two frames, and sometimes you want more. So we, we are adding a third frame, and that's what you see in the... Um, the new version coming up 9.5 if i'm going to create let's say an uh, animation of just 30 frames very short or even like just 15 yeah <laughs> and um I'm, I'm drawing i don't know maybe it's a bouncing ball so there's going to be a, a ground floor and in fact i need to create the animation with that so i'm going to say let's create it with 15 frames and there it is so now every frame has that ground floor and now I want to draw a ball that's going to go kind of uh, down this path, bounce off and go up and stuff like that, go over and out of the frame, out of the scene uh, through this animation. So <clears throat> what I'd like to do is essentially draw it up here and then I'd like to see uh, the next frame. But I, I want to still get an idea of where was this ball before I draw the new one because you know, if I draw it here, it seems to have moved a lot. If I draw it here, it's a little bit closer to where it used to be and you really want to actually see where was that ball before you move to the next frame so that's what the uh, the onion skins are for and you see that here the light table is really the professional name for it there's a new option here with the little pull down and so the light table settings allows you to uh, control uh, how much of the the previous frame do you actually see what you basically have here are sort of weight tables um, to allow seeing the previous frames a little bit better and control which one you actually focus on. You can have up to three. It used to be just two frames back and two frames ahead. And uh, so if we, for instance, we, we enable the light table, clicking it here, you'll still see this prior frame, right? Here it is at full intensity. Here I'm going to the next frame, you still see it, but you can adjust how much of it you want to see. And so if you bring it down to uh, next to nothing, um, you'll see essentially a little bit of a, a change in that. And uh, that allows you to, to get a, a better control of perhaps seeing two or three frames uh, at the same time, looking forward, looking back as well. So let's say here we're going to the first frame and then the next one and we say yeah definitely we want the ball still relatively close then the next frame we want a little bit farther and you see the distance from the prior ball and the one before that it was still overlapping here well if you want to show that it's getting faster and faster because of the earth accelerating um, you want the gravity to pull it down faster so you want to perhaps not have that much overlap anymore right perhaps just a little bit like this and then the next frame after that you don't want any overlap so that's now showing a bit of an acceleration on that movement, on that fall. And then here, uh, see that little bit of distance here. And again, this is where you can adjust how much of that um, opacity or transparency you want for each of those uh, levels of, um, of, uh, of the past frame. So here, for instance, you see it at high uh, intensity. Uh, you see it here. The second one back is a little bit less, but you can adjust that as well. And the one all the way in the back there, just very tiny little bit. And so now I'm going to go all the way down here and kind of flatten it on my uh, fifth frame. And then frame number six, it's going to go starting to uh, jump to the right about the same distance here, about the same speed, but now also starting to turn. And that one's a little bit off. Let's go undo that and make it go up a little bit like so. There you go. And the next frame after this, it's going to continue turning, but it's also slowing down again, right? So we need to make sure uh, the distance from here to here is not the same when we go to the same uh, to the next frame. We want to be a little bit closer, uh, but we also want to keep tilting or turning around like that, right? And um, there we go. So the next frame. Now we're going to slow down and almost reach the, the top of the the peak of this particular parabola here. 
So here we might be turning around this way. We're starting to have an overlap as we're slowing down. And, and then the next frame we have something like this. And the next frame we're starting to accelerate again, right? So here we go. Now we have no more overlap. Here we had a lot. There we had a little bit. And again, you can adjust, uh, you know, which one of these you see more, which ones of these you want to see less. So it's a, it's a new control you have here uh, to see um, frames ahead and frames behind of the current frame. And then so here we go and flatten it splat down. And then here, this one is going to be, let's say we, we turn it around the other way, but we still turn it around, right? So we go like this and it kind of goes up, turn around, and there's just a tiny little bit we see here. All right, so now we have these frames we can scrub through and you can see nicely where is your current frame. Uh, sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes you want it a little bit colorized. And so if you click this button here, tinted frames, you see the ones ahead are showing blue the ones in the back are getting a little bit of a red shift, kind of the <laughs> the, the red shift uh, in astronomy when things are going far away from you. Um, so <clears throat> the uh, the idea here is that if you if you like to use this coloring, this helps you a little bit also, because uh, I mean here in this case we know the movement goes from left to right, but if if this thing was going around like a I don't know a bee flying around left and right and all over and so on, you might not know exactly which way it's heading just by looking at it in in grayscale, right? I mean if you didn't remember what I drew here, looking at this picture like that, you can't you can't tell in which direction it's moving. It could be bouncing from the right, going up, and then to the left. Right, that's a definite possibility. So um, I I remember that I drew it going this way. But if I don't, or if the scene is just too complex and this thing indeed is flying all over the place, back and forth in all directions, the way to perhaps help you is to use the tinted frames so that you can remember red is the redshift from the stars <laughs> uh, going far away, and that's uh, back in time. And then the blue is uh, the, the future. And so that's where we have uh, the, the bluish tint for the next frames, for the upcoming frames. So that's what you can do with this, um, the new features in uh, coming up in 9.5 very soon and uh, allowing you to, to see up to three frames ahead and up to three frames behind. You see right now here, I have the current frame and I got one, two, three reddish ones uh, before and one, two, three bluish ones after that. And so it follows that like this. Of course, then when you disable this, when you disable the light table, you see just, you see just one and you get to play the animation as intended. All right, thanks for watching.